Every time he does this every day, man. Why, why are you embedding him? <laughs> I don't know, bro. Like, man. Welcome everybody to the Onward VR Master League Season 12, Week 15, the final week of regular season play. It is exciting times as we hone in to the, well, top seven of the regular season ladder. As you may or may not know, the top seven teams get an instant advancement onto the postseason tournament where they'll get a chance to compete at what is currently a $7,000 in cash and hardware prize pool that has come together through our sponsors, which we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, we'll hopefully be announcing more details about that prize pool later this week or next week, so keep your eyes out for that information. It could potentially uh, get larger as well, who knows? But regardless, it is going to be a hype final week of gameplay. It's why we're tuning in here to Animal House versus Rome, because these two teams are competing right around that seventh place spot. This is rank six and rank eight duking it out peacekeepers are positioned at rank seven but everybody is so close in mmr that all of these matchups this week are just going to be so crazy and i frankly have no idea how this will impact their ultimate chances at being top seven at the end of this week i couldn't tell you there's i the calculations i've not done <laughs> to figure it out i'm sure some teams have tried to you know, figure out what they really need to win this week to get themselves a position in that top seven. But regardless, it is a pretty hype time uh, as we get into this last week of season 12. Season 12 in particular has been one of my favorites to watch. Uh, really fun to see new teams come in and a lot of new strategies develop over the course of the regular season. Animal House and Rome, however, are not new teams. They've been around for a while. And we're not playing any custom maps as we get into this last week of the season. And so it really is almost a return to the tried and true. The bands coming in from Animal House are Subway from Realm Bazaar. Leaves us with a relatively diverse map pool, but mostly long range. I say that though, but again, there's 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 variety. Suburbia and cargo and the likes are in that in that rotation still. Uh, map one is going to be tanker as chosen by the likes of Animal House. And the one thing is for sure, you can expect some pretty aggressive plays coming in here this afternoon, whether it's from Animal House or Rome. I anticipate this series to actually be pretty quick. Now, the one thing that could throw that prediction off is that we are into this final week. And so the teams are really feeling the pressure to try and lock themselves into that top seven. These wins matter more than they ever have <laughs> for the last 14 weeks of gameplay. And that additional pressure can certainly change how a team may or may not play. So we'll have to see if we do see a shift in strategy. Regardless, this matchup should be very exciting to tune into. And with these two teams duking it out in the final week, I mean, you, you really can't get <laughs> a more hype or kind of crazy matchup for the final week. And, you know, while it, we don't know what those matchups are going to be in the final week, it's all determined by the algorithm at the end of the... Uh, you know, based off of MMR and my teams who played yada yada. I don't even know the, the <laughs> ins and outs of the for the formula, but 
it's crazy that this matchup gets chosen ranked six versus ranked eight i mean you really just can't get a more hype week 15 matchup than this one and uh it, again it really is just kind of fortune that it works out this way both of these teams in the same division and all of you know it's it's crazy so we're gonna be a very exciting matchup today and again a little bit different with all the pressure on the line both teams in lobby go ahead and give the go-ahead to the squads if they're waiting on me on animal house for the active roster today we have F. Lipinski, Quoka Floka, Green Theft Auto, Nolamite, and Wicked Hex. Over on Rome, we have Re, Irvati, Varix, Captain Soda, and Shawai. Usual suspects. Off the top of my head, I will be pronouncing Quoka Floka several different ways throughout the course of this series, as I will pronounce Chawai probably Chewy. I apologize in advance, but it will happen. Let's get into the action for round number one on map one. Tanker here as Animal House go on the attack. They huddle together and... All right, that's for you, Steven. But not that much. Eight, three, four, four, nine, A little three, cheer three. for Steven there. I'm just kidding, Steven. I love you. <laughs> as they dive in, we must have missed what they heard, but... Eight, three, four, four, well, <laughs> let's just consider it was positive. <laughs> As we advance forward here, Animal House pushing up through the center. Our first objective of the day going to be in that back building, the back, uh, what is this, the bow of the ship. No, the stern. Oh, boy. I don't know which one's the front and the back, but it's the back of the ship. Or maybe it's the front. I don't know. The Nautilus out there can help me out. Regardless, it's the... Uh, structure at the back of the, at the west of the tanker and it's a tough objective to push mainly because of these windows re is held up in one of them they can get vision out the window and the main way to deny the effectiveness of this position is with the smokes that animal house are deploying now and you can see with that smoke it's forced re off their initial position lipinski catches a little pick there soda's still staying disciplined on their tight angle they're not going to be peeking out on the other side, a trade. Wicked Hex is pushing into the objective room, and Chawai is seeing all of this through the window. They find one, but Green Theft makes their way into a corner building. No caps coming in yet. Koka tucks down in, and there's the push. Varg's trying to deny the cap. They can't get in time. We start the series. Animal I killed House. Him too. I team killed him. Locking in a cap in chaos. They managed to push in with smokes. They find the kills they need, and Rome are overwhelmed for round one. The perfect start, as we say. The absolute perfect start for Animal House on their map pick. Marsoc round, you take the cap. Doesn't get better. Plain and simple. They have all the momentum in their hands now, and Rome, well, they, they are put into a very hard position right out the gate. This objective, not often capped, mainly because it is pretty tough to break inside the objective room and push into this building and then not get shot at at any point. Usually you have a defender here or somewhere, somewhere, but because Animal House collapsed onto the objective all at the same time, they found all the picks they needed. And just like that, they snagged themselves a two-point cap. Also to be noted, though, is how quick that cap got secured. That got locked in three to four seconds time. That was a very quick code. Hats off to them for sure. They're going to rush us, so... Back, so you stay back, back into it we go, though. Back. See what Rome does on the attack. Okay, so An aggressive start for Animal House. That's them a great advantage. The right and now Rome have to battle back as they go on to the attack. Same objective. Animal House on to defense, and it does look like Rome are going to be playing in, you know, against the Animal House hand here. They're almost expecting Animal House to get aggressive even on defense. Irvati being only one, uh, one of two players that pushes up, Soda also. They leave two on Overwatch, but they're not wasting time either. Rome quickly working up to the halfway mark. Soda 
flying forward here. Should be challenging Nolamite suit. Actually finds Wicked Hex on the long angle. Nolamite peeks the short and catches the refrag, but Hex is down on the back side. And Nolamite doesn't have the option to switch and rotate for the res. Lipinski does. As that red comes through, Green Theft catches one, looking for two on three, but can't shoot one through that window. And Utility getting deployed here, flashes, everything flying in. There's what we're actually working with in terms of light, but we have a little extra enhanced vision. Nolamite's getting aggressive on the offense, flying around behind Re. Doesn't take the shots for some reason. But Re does identify them. I don't know why Nolamite didn't find that kill. Maybe they were looking for more on the flank, but Re is gifted one. And now it's a 3v4. Everyone's still holding the front line up top, but Varok slowly working in through the basement. Eventually, we'll be challenging Wicked Hex. Maybe Green Theft, if they are managing to rotate all the way back to the effective space. They can't, though. They get caught out in the open. A nice timed peek from your body identifies Side, that rotation. Uh, and we're into a 3-3. Animal House not out of the woods here. Lipinski has to peek that door that... Uh, your body was shooting through. But still, Quoka and Lipinski are able to look out these windows and be safe and sound. Unless a nade comes in here or a smoke denies them vision, yep, still mid -right. still this mid -right. window cannot be shot through. And they can simply watch I would call the out rotations. the color of the container, but it's all green. Both Quoka so. and Lipinski are doing this like a light blue and yeah, kind of gray yeah, nice the big looks like, like Rhee and Yervati are not going to challenge the upstairs Rhee's going to hold for the flank because well it's already come in once what's the prevent it from happening a second time I may, might have just one, uh, rest of the team rotates down into the basement owned by the rest of the team I mean Yervati and Varix who is still pushing in from the basement Yervati has decided not to push in from underground is instead going to challenge Quoka and Lipinski up top and Irvati gets identified very quickly Quoka and Lipinski very on point with their callouts making sure both of them know exactly where these players are when they see them but it goes both ways Re and Irvati know where Lipinski and Quoka are outside those windows We're gonna have to go on board Varix. They're getting very close to working their way up out of the stairwell. Wicked Hex has been diligently holding them. And so we will Center right window. pop around as we go here, but we again we gotta keep the eyes on Varix. They check. Wicked Hex is there. Nades come in. A nice flash up and over. Hex is gonna fly off over the top, and it's a trade. Varix goes down. And do we see rotations? Yes, Lipinski and Quoka instantly drop off. And look at how fast Re and Irvati chase them down. Down goes Quoka. Re and Irvati are flying into the objective room. Lipinski confirms Varix, but now they've lost control of the front line. Animal House not looking good on defense here. Rome counts back. Jeez, I thought you were the back With a nice Marsoc wit rent. I mean, next to the perfect counter. Coming in from Rome. As they play it out just right, the timing perfect for them to be placed in that center position and for then Varix to challenge out through the basement. It's all time. That's not just happenstance, people. Believe me when I tell you this, that everything that's done there is timed and calculated by that realm offense. And I love to see it. There's a trade on the bat and it's... Just, it's Ah, it's good plays on it's good plays from everybody man even on defense or animal house as soon as they lose in the trade they don't get any confirm and they instantly drop back as soon as they drop back as soon as that trade happens on the offense side Rome push in and they manage to catch the backs of at least one Lipinski as they try and rotate back and then they're inside and a 2v1 inside that tight corridor it really would have taken a 
uncoordinated duo there to lose that in that situation because, you know, as soon as one swings and dies, the other one's there to find the refrag. So it would not have been an easy double kill. Certainly can happen in a game like Gomard, though, where you can spray down two or three in a matter of a half a mag. So I love it. Either way, I love it. Round one. <laughs> oh, exciting stuff. Round two, sorry. Map one. Where are we? Tanker, that's where, as we dive back into the action for objective numero dos. It is not upstairs, it's downstairs. Ah, uh, fuck. They like, last round they played really slow and then all came together at once. So, that's just something yeah. to look out for. Watch for a swarm of them. You certainly can be prepared for the full court press. Press the fire. One dies on the edge. Episode 3 comes in and refines another on the other side. It's two down for Animal House, and under the suppressive fire, nobody knows it. As Nolamide and Quokka fly in, Re has a potential angle that they can crash in on. Nolamide's here already. They're playing aggressive, and they're flying into objective. Dwight finds no, he doesn't. Nolamide gets a second. Quokka finds the other. They have control of objective space. Soda comes flying into the vent and shuts down the cap. That could have been game. Map set. Re and Captain Soda come flying in, and what could, was started off as a 3v5, suddenly a 1v2. Lipinski and Re duking it out. No respite here, and it's in a minute, we have our round. Roam. <laughs> Defend from the chaos. And my voice... Oh boy, we gotta be careful here. We got ourselves a series ahead of us. But already, this action... Well, how can you not get excited to see what we're seeing here? <laughs> it's... One thing that you can really see from Animal House and from Rome is commitment. There is not a lot of guessing or second guessing on the plays they make. They do not wait and assess. They commit to the play that they're pulling off. And that commitment can net you wins. It can absolutely overwhelm your opponent and get you a 2-0 start like that. A commitment can also have you die fast. And so you do see two go down within the first 30 seconds on one side. The trio does manage to make it on the other. But even then, once they're in, it's chaos and commitment to the play. It almost works. They had one on objective for about two or three seconds, but Soda was there, thankfully able to rotate around and find that pick. If Lipinski had maybe pushed up to the corner, map one into the hands of Animal House four to one. Instead, we're tied up to two and Rome have an opportunity take this map if they manage to get down there we'll have to see we go in to round number four. Oh man what a series folks <laughs> now is when i find out my mic's been muted for the whole the whole stream too watch for a heavy push yep. Little split here. Your body flying in up from the top, though. They'll become crashing in down the stairs. Soda finds one on that side. Hex is here and waiting. We're gonna have to bounce around. Soda comes flying in. This is a heavy push from Rome. They are not wasting time. Lipinski manages to find themselves ahead. Your body hasn't pushed in yet, but Lipinski does get one and seems to be maybe a touch of disconnect on that commitment to the push as. Nobody else is pushing in, and... Oh, there is. There was a kill. Onto the corner. So it is 4-4. Four, four. We're coming. One north staircase. Here comes Vadi Hex. Waiting on a later angle. But look at that. Vadi almost ready for it to be around. Onto the other side of the barrels. They secure the kill with a flash and swing. On the other side, Re and Chawai come pushing in. Lipinski going to be in a bad way. Animal House do not have good control of their entryways. There's several that are open and exposed. The back one that Vars is rotating to in particular, and your bodies onto the corner. Lipinski is covering three entry points right now. But 
there is a breath. And that breath lets Animal down. House posture and set up. Another Two one getting scooped up from Lipinski here suddenly shifts things into their favor. And I like to see the coordination on the offense there. there. The nade onto the corner as Lipinski goes for the confirm. Romer just again a touch out of sync on this entry as Varx and Yervati hadn't quite made it into their entry points. And if they had synced it up, I really would I really think Lipinski would have been overwhelmed. The as they were holding three positions. Still though, Rome have two. I think they can do some damage. The three left for Animal House are surrounding up BJ. Covering Vars's entry point. Green Theft South holding on Irvati's and calling out anything they hear. So your body will rotate. Lipinski is going to take up holding that angle from their prone position. Oh, and Varus about to walk in the Nolamite's line of sight. Oh, Varus doesn't get caught. One watching back tunnels. He's in the middle objective towards the middle alley in the middle. <laughs> That smoke risky as well. C4 detonates to catch your body out. The confirm from Lipinski, and now they know Vargas is the only one left alive. The smoke alleyway does not look like a promising entry point. And truly, no matter where they come in from, Vargas is going to have a tough time staying stealthed and undetected. They have to commit to silence like now on the upstairs because. Nolamai, Lipinski, and Green Theft can hear them above them. Look at that. Varex, well aware. Crouches down, turns the speed off. The rotation, silent now. As long as they stay slow, they can push their way up, have an entry down the stairs, undetected, and have options there. Nothing but the waves in that boat. Or a tanker, whatever. Oh. Ooh, I think Varex made footstep sounds, but it doesn't seem like that got picked up. Maybe it was audio from Millamite Lipinski or theft. Either way, Varex has rotated over to the C4. And may be able to catch Nolamite pillaging this weapon, finding ammo. Uh, it's all about timing. Now Nolamite's tucked Less back in. in. And to the point, Varx has now 35 seconds to work with. They checked their clock, they're well aware. It's all a matter of them seeing Nolamite on this tight corner. A bit off Meta's position. Check, and they find the kill, but look at that. A good defense. Lipinski there and ready to fly for the refrag. And a solid defensive hold. Keeps Animal House in the lead off of our longest round yet. While we're in the between round times, I will prep Twitter meets. Going to actually 
quote retweets the onward underscore VRML Twitter. Game is insane. Caps. What caps? I think all caps will still work for us. So you can either follow me on Twitter and catch this, or you can follow onward underscore VRML or both, which I do encourage. Regardless, it's important to get involved in that social media, help promote the VRML as we get into our final week of regular season and, well, down to the wire. <laughs> Uh, the Challenger Cup, the postseason tournament, it's going to be extremely hype stuff. I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, please, again, go share on the social medias. Uh, you can shout it out on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, whatever you want to do. Just direct people back here to twitch.tv slash onward underscore no, VRML. So we are into a fantastic back and forth. And we go to a new objective, where Rome are set up for a quick assault from the likes of Animal House, and here it comes. Smoke's coming out, so Mike flies the corner, instantly finds themselves several bullets. Still in here, Bindo. Five v four advantage, Rome. They're pushing left, they're by the left building, Three in the middle. left, the fraction Cloca gets rid of your body up the center. The smoke there allows Green Theft to rotate. Some counter flashes coming in from Varg. Soda goes down on the edge. A team kill on the backside from Lipinski actually saves what could have been a cap attempt and turns this into a 2v3. Yes, Hex gets red. Spoken and Hex are the only ones left alive. A counter assault coming in from Rome as they try and shut down the aggression. Shawai trades on the corner. Hex left to Varix and Re in a 1v2. Wow. We're on a six minute delay, so sorry if it seems late, but I'm right on top of it. Skateboard Jake with seven gifted community subs. Thank you so much, dude, for dropping those gifted subs. We really appreciate the support. It's great in intense moments like this when Varex scoops up the kill and ties the series 3 3. I understand why you'd want to support. The action is intense. And uh, again, we do appreciate that. Seriously, thank you for those subs. And if you do want to support the VRML, subbing is a great way to do that. That support comes back to the likes of folks like me, our mod team, and the people hard at work in crafting you the VRML that you know and love. So we really do appreciate all the support that uh, you can give, and got twitch prime anything like that feel free to drop it and if you're new please do hit that follow button we always want to uh bring in more folks to the world of vr esports in particular onward if you don't know vrml has other games as well echo arena snapshot and pavlov leagues currently in operation could be looking for more leagues to come as well so if you like VR Esports, follow VRML at all, all the capacities you can. You can go to VRML.com to do that. We got to go back into this Onward game, though, because it is crazy. We're all tied up. Three apiece, map one. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful series we've tuned into here today. Nice counter flash. Nolamite's throwing some counter aggression out. Flying up through the middle. The call out came that flashes were here though. Nolamite pushes up, advances to their forward position. Varx catches one over the shoulder of Nolamite. Now Nolamite takes the short angle, but has no success. Soda flies the corner to find the kill there. Hex easily resable. Pinsky gonna be able to get this. Turns it back to a 4v5 at the least. But the aggression hasn't come quite yet up through the center. Yeah, 
Are we even utility? One left side no. near the big pillar. Watch up top. Watch the tops in the objective. I'm inside the building. They're they won't flank. The they have three out. left. They're not flanking with three left. They threw a flash on me. Ooh, they have an inaccurate kill count because they feel that one of their downs is a death. That inaccurate kill count could really end up impacting them. Boca has dropped off their initial angle that allows Soda to push up and find the kill. And now the entirety of Rome is pushing forward up through the center with an accurate kill count. And they're on the hunt, looking for kills. Now they don't need the cap. Green Theft is going to fly the corner, and Soda finds that kill. A quick refrag there. The objective's open. A 1, a 2v4. Hex is here. Your body's catching bullets. Hex is going to fly out the opposite angle. No, re-kills one on the back, and everybody is alive here. Twy goes down. Hex is in a 1v3 scenario, battling back and forth. Your body goes down. Re's up next on the hit list. They already survive. Rome. Take Animal They're House's gone. map pick. Jesus, Let's go. Could have gone to cap. Two left alive. I. Yep. This is what you can expect with this kind of with these two teams battling it out. Top squads that play aggressive. I, uh, Tankers in the books. Map number two, Realm's Choice. Where do we go from here is the question. Do we expand into a bit more range? Or do we go to a bit more close quarters? Stick with the tanker mentality, which has, I guess, worked for Realm. Looked like it was going to work for Animal House, but a great bounce back here. Ultimately, a 2-0 start, a tough start for them, and yeah, we are going to stick to the theme of close quarters. Suburbia is where we're headed for Rome's map pick. Feels like a bit of a risky choice with Animal House as your opponent, but really, I suppose any choice is risky. Let me update the score lines, get everything looking good for you here, and we can dive in <laughs> for the ins and outs of Suburbia for map number two. I don't have the stats up just yet. Well, once we are. Yeah, I'm just dealing with some technical issues over here. Then, look at the stats for these two teams here this afternoon over on Give the teams the go ahead. They're not waiting on me. But let's look at the stats. Over on Rome for Suburbia, it is three and two win rate for the season. On Animal House, four and three. So pretty similar win rates. And I mean, truly, with these teams at this level, they all are going to have pretty high <laughs> percentage win rates. Um, you have to win games to get up into the top seven, plain and simple. And it is not an easy task, to say the least. Uh, as you see here, it is a hard fought battle every round, whether it's in chaos or precision. Uh, these two teams know exactly what they're doing and when, and it's just so fun to watch. It's, it's what you expect, again, from teams that have high win rates and are playing at a level that we're seeing here on display today. You got playground? One thing you also will notice is very consistent and accurate communication. 
Very little information goes on relay to the squad. That information is processed by everybody. And that's how you really put a cohesive defense up. Same thing with an offense too, though. So you can identify all of the potential attacking points. Ooh, a trade there between Re and Mobstar over on objective side. Quoka has pushed up to an aggressive position, though. And if they continue to advance, Re is going to identify this advancement. And a nade comes in. A nice toss. Re moves. Oh, my goodness, Re. Just barely moves. Look at the setup from Irvati in the two-story. Ready to gun down. Quoka Nolamite finds Re re-peeking the window. So the res results in ultimately a one for two. Rome have the advantage now. 4-3. Chawai not alive for the world much longer. I say that as they find the kill on their opponent. And just like that, Nolamite's alone. They've lost all control of their defense. And Rome are flying in from all directions. Nolamite is overwhelmed. And securing themselves the point. Rome take themselves a lead on their map pick. 1-0. Almost a perfect start, reminiscent to the powerful performance from Animal House on round one on Tanker. Rome absolutely overwhelmed the defense there with a little bit of counterplay, uh, denial of that counterplay, and just overall, you know, it's it's like the it's the little things that happen so fast too that are really impressive. As an example. I'll try and do more replays in the back half of this series so we can look at them. But as an example, when Re was downed in the two-story window, Irvati, getting these names right, I think I am, pushes up from the stairs. As they push up the stairs, they recognize and hear from communication from Re that they're getting counter-pushed. They fly up here, res, and as soon as that res comes in, Instead of maybe trying to go back down the stairs or tuck into the tight corner, they pull over and wait for the counter push to come up the stairs. This move saves them both, although Ree then does die to fighting out the window. It is still a big play that prevents that counter from getting three kills. So, I love to see it. Animal House now on the attack. We'll see what they do for round number two. I'm going Tetris. Map number two. Standard three, aggressive defensive position from Ree. They get a lot of suppressive fire down lane. Quoka's gonna fly the corner though. And Ree is not ready for the aggression. There's no one on objective. Quoka's in the smoke. Here, body comes crashing back. Suddenly, Rome are on a retake. They have no control of objective. Thankfully, the flash finds Quoka. They're fully blind. But now, Rome has to invest all their time in dumping mags into the smoke. And Quoka still hasn't pushed up for the cap. They're just playing it patient. Waiting for all of this pre fire to come through. As soon as the smoke dissipates, they're gonna find the kills. One, two, go down. Animal House find the third. What a good play from Animal House. Four left alive. And some kisses to wrap it up. High things here, one apiece. It's. It looks like it's overwhelming and easy. That's all. I. I. I, I, I can maybe understand that perspective, but. It's just like masterful coordination. <laughs> I hate to, I hate to uh, flaunt the egos up of these teams, but I mean, you really are just seeing overwhelm teams overwhelming their opponent with coordination. It doesn't look like that because it's so aggressive, but everything is all team oriented. The suppressive fire early to open up the side lane for the push to come down that lane uncontested. Everything has a purpose. There's no free fire going out for no reason. It's coordination and understanding of how your team plays 
And that's what nets you these kinds of overwhelming wins. Really good team coordination, communication, all of these things vital. And it's going to keep on happening throughout this series. Well, that is probably, As we like, go back to it. To, or easiest one no, to probably get capped on. Uh, focus, focus, focus. Is this, uh, is this uh, number or? three of map two. Never mind, never mind. Flash is coming out. No one might. On the aggressive swing is denied vision as they crawl up to their corner. To the same extent, Re on their aggressive push doesn't see Nolamite slowing down off of the flash, and everyone passes everybody. Ooh, a little trade on the edge of burning building. That is a risk for Animal House defense. They're fortunate that Quokka is down behind cover. So actually, they have pretty good communication. Mobstar and Varix straight up through the center. One lane, one flanking. Re trying to get rid of Green Theft, who's swinging around the edge now as they have control of that two-story. we got to keep our eyes kind of split here. As that is what Rome on the offense want. Chawai finally confirms Quokka. Nolamite tries to get aggressive on some flashes and some swings but can't find their way out to Irvati. They're getting counter flash. No one might completely blind here. Irvati still completely blind. Both of them find vision and both of them find bullets. Chawai is going to rotate around to Irvati to try and get this res. Green Theft's going to swing around to try and find the confirm. It's a matter of timing if Green Theft will be able to find the double. I'm coming. Green Theft also seems to be potentially pushing into the two story as Ree is still a threat here. Green Theft's been searching for this counter for a while. Behind mid -house. Listen to all the comms. Flanker behind mid-house. I should be ready for Green Theft, but they're not. Green Theft finds the rotation no there. Three finds Lipinski. We're into a 1v1. Simple as that, folks. Green. Your body's not going to communicate yet where they saw Green. They're going to wait till Green's out of radio range or earshot, and then... Tell Re, hey, I saw them rotate here. It's gonna be a matter of if Re will swing around to get the res. How does Green defend alone? For now, Re seems to be looking for an angle down onto the objective to catch Green rotating. Green, though, knows Re's here. They identified them early on APC side, and they know Re is in this two story. So they're not pushing out to angles that that two-story is going to be able to find. Finally, Re pushes out. Is it too late, though? As, he, as Green Theft sets off into a very off-meta position, Re is going to rotate around here and try and get the res, and Green's not going to see it. Your body should know where I Green Theft one. is. Three or four bodies. And Green's not going to take shots. Everyone stays quiet. Three minutes on the clock. Green's just waiting for Re to see the corner. And they shoot through the shrubs. Don't find anything. Tag Re once. They're going to have to heal. Then Green tucks back in. Re's not going to find anybody. It's ring around the rosy. And now Green has to challenge. The three quarters him, cover to Re. I think they recognize where they were, how far away from an objective they were, and ultimately the right play for them to try and challenge that. They could not stay where they were, plain and simple. It would have left objective too open, although maybe they could have caught a line. I don't know. Anyway, I understand why they push out, but it puts them into wide open. Um, I was going to say wide open cover, but that certainly doesn't make sense. Puts them out in the open, and the three-quarters cover works out for Rome. That's them a... An advantage. And they go on defense for our next round. Ooh. Man, oh man. Fantastic series we're doing it.
Take a look at chat. Seeing who's all hanging out here. I pick Care Bear, Love a Lot. I am Sonic Shadow Destroyer, Gladiator, Golden Viking. Skate for Jake with those subs earlier. We do appreciate. Steve James Tim, TX Mad Mac Gaming. Phenom, thank you all for hanging out. Catching what is a great series. Back to it we go for round number four. Rome on the defense, and look at this. Animal House setting up for an early quick swing. That gets shut down fast. Chawai right out the gate catches a kill. Lipinski's still here looking for more, and Chawai is going to try and get out there with some flashes, but Lipinski has put out a good smoke. Meanwhile, Varex comes pushing into the back of Green Theft through the flash. Dolomite can't push up as Reeves there. Look at the aggression from Rome on defense. We're good. Hey, they have two left, two left. One's in spawn. Spawn room. Accurate kill count. Slipinski catches Chawai. Mobstar on the back of this off uh, offense, I say, but it's defense. Mobstar catches another. He's trying to push them. There's one objective. There's one front porch center house. They split here because that's what Animal House is doing. They're splitting the attention of this defense. Varx has eyes on Lipinski. Monster goes down to your body on a flank. Lipinski is alone in a 1v3. Pre firing a corner that no one's at as Re flies out on aggression. Rome picked things up a notch on defense. Changed the pace of what they've been putting out on defense. And again, overwhelm with coordination. Three and one now. Oops, I got the scores wrong here. Apologies, apologies. Everyone's freaking out. Oh my gosh, Knight, you don't have the right scores. What are you doing? Rome's up 3-1. A round away from taking this series. If we're going to look at the worldwide standings. <laughs> it's not what Animal House won. Rome are six, Animal House are eight. Truly, neither of these teams, again, can afford a loss. In this final week, It makes me nervous, but the L here, it has a pretty high chance of putting you into the Challenger Cup. And there's going to be some good teams in the Challenger Cup. Not going to be a lot of easy wins there. Hey, and no matter been, what, we're good, we're good. Okay. the final matchup between Qualifier A and B after that Challenger Cup weekend, that series is going to be solid. So... The Challenger Cup is just, it's a lot of games played, and a loss can put you out of the, out of the competition. So a tough couple of games to win. Animal House, what a, what, this is such confidence to counter aggress like this. When they're down 3-1, they're not allowing Rome to have control of pace. And they're throwing aggression at them to deny them that control. The trouble is, is that it does net them into a death. Although it's a one for one break. Focus here, they go down. Chawai finds that kill. Animal House are losing control a little bit here. As Lipinski peeks the deep corner. Utility comes in, that's actually gonna hurt. Mobstar trying to peek. They get flashed. Green Theft trying to get aggressive, gets shut down by a patient Rome offense. Pinsky and Mobstar push up. The rest of the Rome team pushing in around objective. Your body finds two. Fly goes down. Captain Soda on objective. Tablet comes out. Nobody denying the cap yet. Soda going to punch in the code. No, they go down. Varus on the backside looking for the code. Both come up. Lipinski finds the kill. Why do I do that? I literally shield in there. Animal House. By this round. What? Oh, this is crazy. What a fun series to watch. Absolute chaos, counterplays, plays, mindsets, pacing. Oh, so much high level strategy going on here. At least in my mind. These players may tell you, I don't know what Knight's talking about. We were just playing the game. But them playing the game is different. Understand that with these two teams and how long they've been playing together as squads and how long they've been playing the game. 
It's a really just a, it's a fundamental command of everything in the game. It, it allows you to amplify your strategies and, and plays and, and think about different things outside of point my gun and hit my target. It's fun. It's crazy. I love it. This is, they're delivering a great series to say the least as these two teams fight for their lives. Animal House onto the attack. Playground objective. If you're going to give it to a team that can play a great, I, how does this go for this AH offense? Let's find out. Round number five. Get any get some shots off on someone who peeks. I'll smoke lane three so we can. Throw it up at the early bullet. And look at all of the quick one, one guesswork from corner. Lipinski to the other doors. That is almost one pinpoint one accurate. There, Soda floor. goes down. Twai finds Quoka on the edge. A one for one exchange. Spawn house, second floor. Counter flash One from Farx. Blind screen. Why is still prone underneath this spot. Like really looking for him here, but I say that as Green pumps the underside of the bus with bullets. Three still alive, but they're losing control of objective. It causes the rotation to come in as your body swings to catch another. Re pops up. Varix trades up through the center and re catches another. Animal House are down to one. Rome have three left alive around objective. Oh, so much to look at, so much to analyze. We have to go back and watch the VOD of this game. <laughs> and break down these plays because they everything is happening so fast the reactions are so quick but it's all so calculated it's just crazy four and a half left for what could be the final round of map two it comes down to Lipinski and if they can clutch through this Rome defense You know, just go back and watch this game at, like, quarter speed. <laughs> It'll really help you understand the plays. Straight up beautiful onward that we're seeing here today, though, as coming down to the back half of round number six. Set up from Rome with the trio left alive. A nice triangle around objective covering all the edges. Ree's position in particular vital. If Ree's not here, they open themselves up to a cap through the hedges. That is why Re is positioned here to deny that hedge cap. If they go down, Varex can peek. Irvati can put rounds through the shrubs. But still, solid position for them to be in. And I wonder if Lipinski will be able to find Re in that corner. It's going to come down to a matter of being silent. Pathing, I think, is re Varix your body, but your body could very well, again, fire through the shrubs, so. Not going to be easy. A fake grenade. And Ree stays quiet about it. Pinsky going to challenge. 
Nirvati has been checking this periodically. Here they go for the check. It's a fast clock, and Nirvati avoids these shots. Lipinski has to continue suppression and get back in the cover. After that, though, Varek's going to push out and look at that. Lipinski reading them like a book. Fast, man. Dude, I actually sell shoes for work, so I know what you mean. Irvati's looking for an angle up over the top of the shrubs. A risky position to take. And time begins to tick down for Lipinski. Question becomes what's utility what utility is available. And I think honestly a full rotation is the choice here. Re can't catch this swing if they do go around the other side. They don't have a line up through the middle. Although your body is looking. Oh, and they almost catch Lipinski. Since he's going to have to heal, they're going to commit to the cross there. And now, I think this is the right rotation. 30 seconds left. They're going to push in from the opposite side. It's all a matter of if Re and Irvati properly tuck themselves in. Which is what Irvati's doing. But they're not ready for Lipinski here. Down they go. Re has to retake. They cannot sit there and not push this objective. Lipinski's here. They spot Re out. They click dry. They run out of ammo, and Re finds the kill. Animal House and Lipinski had the rotation. They had it. But Rome, lock it in. 4-2 off of a stellar performance. A great bit of retake and counterplay again from the Rome team on defense. Wow, what a treat to tune in here to these first two maps. We still will play our third one out. Selected by Animal House. And you know, I don't think Animal House are, are done yet here. I don't think that their chances of seventh place are gone. I th if I've done the math correct, If they do well on this third map and can tie the score line, they're gonna go down very little in MMR. So, I think what they'll need is a big loss from Peacekeepers who are currently positioned in seventh place. Because Rome are six, so they'll only go up. Peacekeepers will stay where they are until they play their game. Quarantine for map number three. And who is Peacekeepers playing this week? I think they might have actually already played. Yeah. They played er or are playing Error 404 right now. If I could have cloned myself, I would have and been there for that game too. A ton of good ones today. So. How did Peacekeepers do is the big question. They're going up against Error 404. Currently, second place team. The number one squad in American, in the American division. It is, uh, that's not an easy series there for Peacekeepers. I really think Animal House have to stay close on this thing. They really got to lock it in for this final map here, and if they can... What's the score line right now? 8 to 5. They can win in score line, technically. If they manage to 4-0 quarantine. Not an easy task by any means, but... If they manage, they will win in points. And that uh, it will really minimize their loss, whereas if then these keepers suffer a bigger... I mean, it's... It's so... It's... Cra it's Again, not over yet for the AH squad. Final map still very much matters to them, in my opinion.
between a few more folks to drop in. That's quick. Nomad. Dillion. Got you guys in the shout out earlier. So again, appreciate you all stopping by. And like we mentioned earlier, be sure to share the stream. One thing we haven't mentioned is our sponsors. They come together to offer up a great prize pool that is now $7,000 in cash and hardware. Could get bigger as we get to that point where we announce the prize pool next week, but 7,000 for now. And uh, we appreciate the support from our sponsors. Those sponsors include HyperX with the HyperX Quadcast S that you hear in my voice on the Cloud 2s that I'm listening to the game on. Amongst a few other products that we offer are champions like wireless and uh, Bluetooth headphones, uh, in-ear headphones that work great with your Quest or Quest 2. I really do recommend picking up HyperX products, even down to their lines of keyboard and mice. I use it all, and it's worked for me fantastically for the, what has been now over a year. So uh, I highly recommend the, the product uh, of HyperX. Also, check out ProTube VR. They offer fantastic stocks that help stabilize your aim in-game. If you want to become an expert sniper in the league, I highly recommend you check out ProTube VR. If you want to add to the immersion, you can also pick up the haptic feedback version of their stock where you can feel the recoil in your shoulder when you shoot your gun. It's very cool. VR cover, offering fantastic covers for any VR device, greatly enhancing the comfort. A must pick up on any VR headset purchase. You got to get yourself a VR cover or two washable all sorts of greatness uh, in those vr cover products i highly recommend you go check them out i think if you do exclamation point vr cover in twitch chat you can find a link to them and last but not least vrml contributing into that prize pool because we love to see and encourage the growth of vr esports and uh that's that what else do i got currently we're waiting for a fifth from Rome. I imagine at this point they're looking for a sub out of their full roster so that they can keep them practiced and ready to go uh, for what is going to be now their postseason tournament. Securing themselves a position there, I'm fairly certain they will be advancing on to the postseason, so they got to be feeling actually pretty good right now. And we're not seeing a sub, it was just a tech delay as uh, everyone from Rome staying on board. Same, so same thing for Animal House, no subs there. So I was wrong. Not perfect. Someone's yeah. yeah. I'm pushing up there. To watch the cross. That's the gladiator. Get up with That's you. Uh, Lukar puts one as fast as you yeah. can. I'm gonna stay up there, so I'm just gonna watch it a few seconds. Into it we go for round number one. With no early aggression, it's an indicator to roam of the animal house's spawn. So I get that north. East Crater, they're going to have a long ways to go before they can get a chance to contest the gas station objective. It does mean as well, though, that they'll work their way all the way up along this north side relatively undetected. There is a line or two there from Re and Soda. They're more watching for the rooftop position. And look at how this Rome defense is setting up. Confident. Spread out. Wouldn't say risky, as they are set up into some solid spots, but be a little bit vulnerable to a one at a time shoot down. And as I say that, Chwai says, well, what if I just Minus win those north. shoot downs? Catches the kill, and just like that, that forward defensive position nets them in the kill. Varex finds another up through the center. We couldn't get over there in time. But Lipinski now looking for that refrag, sees Varix, but doesn't have the angle through the rubble. Maybe he didn't see Varix. Rubble of burning, rubble burning. First floor hospital windows. 
Soda being identified there. And once they've identified both Varix and Soda, that's what their focus becomes. Because they need these picks. They're down bad now, 3 5. And Lipinski with patience Rubble's catches bad. Varix Rubble's up bad. in through that rubble position. That opens up a little bit for the offense, but still Soda's position is known. That's why the smoke gets thrown. Three has a line from the two story, so if Lipinski goes too wide past this smoke, Ree could check, but Ree's actually more focused on watching objective. Not intending to peek out this lane here. If anything, they're looking down there towards Green Theft and Mobstar's position. And the trio going to reconnect at the down plane. Work their way up. eventually take control of rubble a little more utility applied as they now apply smokes smoke towards out. objective yeah. space with me if anything designed to draw out a rotation or two from defense but that powerful of smokes more coming in towards your body sounds like it And there's suspect that one is here in this two-story. Green Theft has cleared it out, though. And the only threat is your body from a long angle. Who does catch some bullets? Shawai catches He's Mobstar the trying to cross. By OBJ. It's now just Green Middle Theft burning clear. and Lipinski. Body gets past Lipinski's line. They're gonna recheck. Lipinski's there and waiting. Your body oh, avoids yeah. shots there. More splashes and nades coming in as Lipinski catches aggression from Kawhi. And Green Theft is trying to battle it back. Yeah. I am copy building. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's up. Oh, he did. No. Fuck. I just got flashed. Green utilizing this pillar. Able to dodge the line of sight from Chwai and Irvati. And now gonna get the res. So keeps it 2v4. They both try and get out. And look at this. Re has taken up a position from the two story. And there's the confirm. Re finds them both at rubble and roam. Take another point. Looking to make this win a little bit more impactful for their team. I was wrong, skateboard Jake. I said exclamation point VR cover, nothing happened. Ooh. Like I said, I think this would be a fun game to go back at and analyze. Really look at the VOD and dive into what we're seeing. I'm thinking maybe something we could do in the uh, off week. How well teams are that, but who cares? <laughs> I would love to look at and analyze strategies and it would be kind of cool if we had all of you guys submit clips of good plays that you wanted to analyze that were captured by VRML cameras. Think about it. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty cool. It would, of course, require everyone to go back into their favorite VOD and 
do the clipping because I'm not sure. I will tell you one thing. I'm not going back to all those VODs. <laughs> I casted them all. I was there. I didn't see wait, any wait. motion. It's fine. South, south. Quick, quick. South, quick. Animal house identifying the realm spawn early. And that allows them to pick up one kill early. Gotta keep our eyes on the edge case there from Lipinski. My camera takes us elsewhere, has other ideas. A nice pickup from Varix. Prevents the flank from coming to fruition and Rome survive their control and takeover of Guys, hospital. I'm gonna fly the drone. And they nearly caught Reed through the doorway. And the drone did not last long. As soon as it came out, it was shot down. Trade there from gas station. We lost one possible banker. Leaves Rome with three. We'll stay focused on Soda and Re here, but the third is Varix the over in the north. Yeah, I'm not seeing. On the other side, Animal House also down to three. Green Theft has pushed out into the rebel position far away from objective, but has good vision. Oh, a couple of different angles if they choose. The trouble, of course, is no, no trouble at all. Not exposed onto that backside there. If they rotate out of that pillar position, they will be. And it Someone's at North Roof. Bullets. Three managed to find one. Green Theft goes down to Varex. Animal House are left with Quoka in a 1v3 defense here. Boca just has to play this one patiently. They can't find the double without going down, though. And a really nice plan with the transfer almost puts them into a 1v1 against Varix. But not quite. Rome pile onto their lead 2 0 on map 3. Ooh, I am getting inside info. If you want no spoilers, plug your ears. Okay. Peacekeepers have lost. To what degree is that my question? Because Animal House not looking good here on map two. I wonder if that information has been relayed to them and if that will impact their focus. I don't think it will. They seem very locked in here. As we go into a new objective, the north side, a quick spawn for Animal House. They really could capitalize on this. Although a cap is likely out of the question. An overwhelming offensive attack certainly could be in store. Would be a nice start to their comeback. We'll have to see how it goes, because Rome are throwing out counter aggression. And Re is here. They find one, but that's it. Minus one. A full one for one trade. As Lipinski goes up to the two story and tries to battle Soda, they lose. Animal House are not connecting in their exchanges. As they lose a ton to why he catches green theft. And you're, what we're seeing here is the aggression getting shut down. Sometimes it overwhelms. Sometimes you find all the kills and completely prevent the offense from pushing in. Monstar nearly transfers the two, but can't quite catch Soda out. One's enough. They drop back. Rome's down to three. And so Animal House do have Rome into a bit of a rotation here as they try and push over to objective. Mobstar continuing to keep that foot on the gas as Nolamite looks to shut down. down Soda. Oh, they down Soda there. So a res call comes in. Varex invested in pushing up there. Your body alone against Mobstar cannot find the kill and Mobstar lives yeah, for another one, uh, trade. By the, uh, the truck at the north and behind it, the east side of it. Res comes in, so Soda's back up. More shots coming in from Nolamite, yeah, the but wing. they he's don't the quite wing. connect. Mobstar is going to try and work their way around Irvati, and that's a good smoke. It's a good smoke. It lets them get an angle potentially onto Varix. 
Damn, look at that. Varix reading the room perfectly. Last Tucks back wing. in, and now Nolamite's trapped. On the wing alone in a 1v3 with Soda and Varix known. Nolamite's position there. We get off the wing undetected, which does open up the opportunities for them to pop and shoot. Soda and I. Start scanning. You're recognizing the danger. Oh, and I see them. Nolamite prone can't get back soon enough. Oh, we'll have three. They are running away with this series. And what started out of the good round for Animal House is now, uh, well, it's a bad loss. What started out as what was a rough start for Rome has become a commanding lead. And again, locking themselves in to the top seven off of this series. A very solid performance. Of course, it's not over yet. Animal House can rally. They certainly can push this thing back. It's a team that's capable of coming back from deficits they're capable of changing pace and, and they have varieties of play it's not out of scope for this ah Let's squad see you in the challenger cup boys Even if i'll be uh red, red bulls on me maybe unless we would have boofed rome tonight Yeah, I think if Animal well, House... they get less MMR because it's a lower-ranked team. A lot oh, of wait, calculations no, going on. I thought, it, I thought they were playing Pantheon. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. You can theory hey, crap man, about this MMR of, all day. I'm getting shot at, and I don't even care right now. <laughs> we're getting called out like a motherfucker. The loss seems to be mentally impacting the Animal House squad, and, well, that's evident in the scoreline here. This is now 3-0 on Quarantine. Green Theft does get past some early shots and sets up into aggressive forward position. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Soda finds a kill, reconfirms Quoka. Rome have control of West. Does not look good for the Animal House defense, especially with how they're set up very far away and dying. Flankers down. As Re catches Green Theft, up. Lipinski's still there, and Soda is pushing in to the objective space. Mobstar's tucked in. And Soda, Lipinski, excuse me, gets here in time to catch out Soda. Yep, one down. A well-timed rotation. seems to have identified Mobstar in the corner as flashes help, and utility come in. As I say that, they also are not finding anybody. They just call out. They don't see anybody up there. Mobstar sees Varx push up. The Y is going to go up next. Pinsky still tucked in. So it's time for Rome to try and work up to the objective. Really just a lot of free fire. Mobstar tries He's to dead. push Caps out. Open off of the smokes. There's the confirm, and Varex is tabled out. Lipinski's still holding a late angle, and they catch one. Nade for the confirm. The rotation for good measure. Finds another up top. Good heal. Irvati's pushing to objective. As they are flashed, this could be a potential cap attempt, and it is going to be a cap attempt from your body. They got the tablet out, and the code goes in. Rome takes the W, five to zero on map three. Wow. And you know, it just feels that Animal House maybe gave them gave up an opportunity here on map three. Now, of course, I, I, what do I know? You know, I'm sure these teams have looked at all this stuff and know that regardless, if we lose, we lose. We're, we're going into the Challenger Cup. 
We did say see you in the Challenger Cup, so certainly we'll be excited to see Animal House participating in that tournament next weekend. But still, an absolute stellar series today. A brawl of two top teams. And glad we tuned into it. Glad you all tuned into it as well. And a reminder that we won't have any games next week until the weekend. That's when the Challenger Cup starts. We still have plenty of games this week. Keep the eyes peeled. Uh, we're going to be wanting to dump, jump in and see where these teams all lie at the end of the season. Although I think we've locked in our top seven off of these two games. Maybe we'll get a challenge. Maybe that'll shake things up. I don't know what could happen in this back half of the week. But there's only a few days left to make a game. And so I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen still, but it seems like we've potentially locked in our top seven. And again, regardless, I still do want to check out every team that's playing, uh, you know, from 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 gold to diamond to, to master, just to see where we're at for what is going to be the postseason tournament soon enough. And frankly, if this is what we're going to be expecting, I am going to be I'll be a happy camper. I could I could cast and watch this kind of gameplay all day. It was awesome to see great, great. Uh, back and forth here and that's it an hour and a half a series done shout out again to our sponsors pro vr vr cover HyperX, and vrml for contributing into that prize pool and helping us grow the vr esports scene shout out to everyone tuning in here today shout out to skateboard jake for the gifted subs and that one month Shout out to a couple of people that followed as well. Buchibo, Erosial, and BTTU, but that was yesterday. Really do appreciate everybody coming in here and hanging out. And Well, be sure to tune in next time. I think we'll probably try and pick up a game Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So keep the eyes peeled again for casts at that time. We are back to venues Saturday at 6 p.m. PST, Sunday at 12. So if you do want to catch that the game the, those those games on Horizon Venues, you can, or you can catch them on Twitch at twitch.tv slash VR Masterly. <clears throat> Check out our merch. Arma just came out with some new stuff for VRML. It's sick. Check out VRware. <laughs> they came out with some merch as well. It's sick. Support. Our merch vendors, please. Because you are supporting VRML when you do that. That's it, man. That's all I got. That's all the plugs. I'll see you all Friday, most likely, for more gameplay. But until then, stay classic.